Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. All right, we are we are jam packed. Three big things uh, in the very front of the show before we get to your phone calls today right. on a special Friday yak uh, situation. Uh, we have uh, a a little story of the movie theater uh, that I will get to, followed by Rob's nostalgia corner, which I will get to, followed by a visit from a person from our past. Mm. So all that will happen in the beginning of the show. On a Yak and, Attack uh, Friday. And I do feel that Friday. when you call it a Friday Yak situation, that lends an yes. urgency to it that really communicates this is a big day. Might very well be that I just don't care for the Yaks, but that's all right. Really? I, uh, yeah. Well, no, I, I do. I love the I love the phone calls. I right. I, I get an you occasional hate the phone people. call. Uh, no, I don't hate the oh, people. Okay. Hate I the like phone. the people. Okay. The people keep us chugging. They yes. listen. They're, they're invested. They, yes. How can I You love the people. Hate you hate the Yaks. I I love the people that call. Oh, I love the people that oh, call. I do. I do. It, it's do you fun. hate the it's player fun. or do you hate the game? Will you stop with me hating? Can we get? Can we move on, please? Yes, I'm for sorry. Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right. So last night, Mrs. O'Mara uh, graciously acquiesced to my desire to go see a chick flick, a the ultimate chick flick, Downton Abbey, the number right. one. The number one movie in the United States. The right Queen now. and uh, coming and, to the Abbey. She, she went. She went along with it, and I, I have to be clear that she is not a fan of the television show. She didn't watch it when I watched it. So this is one where a couple of times during the the, the screening of the film, I said I owe you, and she laughed the first time, and then I said, you know, it got late, and the movie was going on and on and on, and I looked over and said, I really owe. Uh, but but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So we're sitting. Uh, we have a lovely dinner at the Olive Garden, which was lovely. Lovely. Oh, nice. No, we oh. didn't. Uh, we went to our sushi joint right right across from the movie theater, and then uh, iguana it's sushi. Over. Uh, what's that? Iguana sushi. Uh, no, this is called sushi tai. Ooh, sushi tai. It's really number two on our hit parade. Okay. Nice. It's where we go. It's a default restaurant. Wait, good sushi and good Thai, or just good. Sushi. Good sushi and good Thai. Oh. And good times. Jack Talk Thai. Jack Talk Thai real good. <laughs> Meet the parents. 20-something team. Uh, so where was I? So we go into the theater, and they start coming in. It's a very popular film with yes. this demographic. And Carla leans over to me and goes, Peers. Uh, which I thought was was funny. If you hear that, Mike, Mike, here come your peers. Uh, and she says it like three different times. Okay, the joke was funny the first time, Carla, that these are my peers coming in. And then a pack comes in, a gang, a street gang mm. yes. of, 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 uh, of older ladies. Oh. Yeah, just, just one after the other. And a lot of them are wearing like the headbands and sort of gowny things where... The Downton Abbey look. Oh, it's a Downton Abbey go. party. Oh, they're cosplay. It's, it's a Downton cosplay. Abbey party. That's awesome. It's a Downton Abbey yeah. party. And they are having a blast. Wow. And there are, I think, two, maybe, there are three rows of them. There are three rows of them, and they come in, and there's laughter, and they are, they're so, they're having such a good time that Carl and I can't help but be infected by this this giddy did it make, did it like make you feel kids. better and make you feel not bad that you came dressed as Carson the butler <laughs> <laughs> it's always Carson with you. He's my favorite. Always Carson. You'll appreciate uh, later well, you're on, put on. In, in the tale. So we're sitting there, and it's Carla, and Carla's in her uh, her scrubs for her uh, skin skin school. Right. And uh, why don't you call yourself sitting, a nesty? Uh, Esty. Esty. She's, yeah, yeah. she's an Esty. Yeah. All right. And so so she's sitting there next to me, and we're having a great time, and just listening to these ladies. And suddenly, uh, this lady gets up in her Downton Abbey uh, outfit, comes down to me, and goes, "Bop." No. Sam? No. Tom? <laughs> no. I said, Mike. Mike. And she's just, you know, she's infectiously funny because she's standing right was over she, me. Just, was she fueled, do you think? Oh, I'm sure they'd had some yeah. cocktails. Okay. I'm All right. sure they were cocktailing. She goes, the movie started at 645. So that's deep, you know, that, that's sure. like midnight Perfect. For, for my people. <laughs> and so she looks at me and she says, 
would you take a picture of our group? I said, I, it would be, and, and I, you know, I've got the whole Downton Abbey vibe. Uh, yeah. It would be an honor. <laughs> and, uh, and I said it with a British accent because I'm giddy and I had a Sapporo yeah. beer. Yeah. So, uh, Carla so they, leans over and says, you may not deny them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, you know what? How many years do we all go to movies and we try to manufacture stuff happening at the right. movie theater? And then something real happens well, like this. Not all, natural. Mike, something not natural. all of us did that. Organic. <laughs> So we get up, I stand up, and then one of them or Carla or somebody suggests, and I think it's one of their group, suggests that it's early. The movie is, is far from coming on, that they go down to the front of the theater. Oh, beautiful idea. Wonderful. And so I, I stand up, they hand me the phone, and, uh, and the parade begins. And this is just a down the stairs, down to the front of the theater parade. One, one thousand, two, oh one thousand. Oh, my God. I, don't, God. I got nowhere to go. The trailers haven't even come okay. on. Oh, I'm so looking this is at a actually, Chevrolet ad on a freeze screen. Yeah. That's a no wonderful problem. distraction at this point because it's the it's worst fun. time to be at the yeah. theater. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Carla's Carla laughing. Well. I'm laughing. They're rowdy enough to be fun. They're funny. What was one of the lines? Later on, they took another picture, and it was just something like, Joyce, you, if I'm going to take this picture, uh, you have to look at me, even <laughs> though I know I pissed you off. Oh, Joyce! It was hysterical. <laughs> they, were a great, they were a good group. They're, they're a good group. So they all go down, and uh, and the, the lady goes, Mike, and she ah! and points at me, is going to take our picture. And then like, you're, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> thank you, Mike, thank you, Mike, thank you, Mike, thank you, Mike. It's like way too much uh, credit. And then uh, so I go down to the front, and I, I snap their picture. I get ready to take their picture, and uh, I say, all right, ladies, one, two, three. Say, Carson, draw me a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Take their picture. They're satisfied. They're happy with it. They get up. They sit down. Mike, I hear Mike again. So now, now I'm their buddy. Now they're. Buddy. Yeah. Would you take one more of us seated? I said it would be a pleasure, oh, and boy. I take the picture of them, uh, them seated, <laughs> and then, and then uh, the one lady goes out. I guess the the original lady that asked goes out to the ladies' room, and one of her friends goes over, taps me on the shoulder, and says. She sings, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> and Carla, Carla's all in. Carla goes, really? What does she sing? And then she comes back, tells me a story uh, about uh, 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 when she was a little kid that she got up and she said, Davy, Davy, cocky. And, uh, and apparently she's saying it was, I remembered it. it I, re, I remembered Shock it. it was, Did uh, Carla uh, think that her friend was trying to connect you with her? No, 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 no. Okay, not, not like that. No. Not like that. Okay. She's speaking about it. She knows we're a couple. Oh, okay. Even though uh, you know, we're sitting next to each other. And well, uh, Mike, and, making yes. love doesn't have to be limited to two people. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Okay to me. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. It really it really worked out well and it was uh it was sweet and then the movie came on and uh it was Downton Abbey E and uh, How was it, was it because my yeah. mom it was it was what many, you'd expect. How many teacups exactly did you give it? it? I, uh, you know, I thought I liked the show better, the TV show, because they really they so have, not as I good think, as the show. I think it was all, the con the condensation of the plot uh, uh, lended to uh, you know taking away some of the credibility. Of okay, it, to be honest with you, but other than that, no. But it was great, and it's beautiful to look at, and uh, and I believe it cemented its place in there will be multiple episodes and kind of a tribute to Maggie Smith at right. the end, uh, which was sweet. I, it was fine. It was great. What do you mean multiple episodes? Multiple movies? Uh, I think I think you get... Oh, absolutely. Oh. I think they set well, the table for probably many, very... many more Downton Abbey movies, which wow. is fine. Because at this day, in this day and age, with civility and the genteel uh, British aristocracy, we need it. You but know, you back just... But here's really the impressed. thing, Oscar. Ba it's, they're using the same template they did with the 1966 Batman show. They could make the movie for pennies because everything was already set. They had built the sets. They oh, had the yeah. cast. Scale. So it's going to be very cheap well, to and it's good, and it's talent, quality. and it's fun, yeah, and it's, it's quality. Good to look at I, and, and I've uh, never really stuff. watched a show. Oh yeah, me neither. But I mean, how do you know so much about it? I follow it through Mike because I know that oh, we, do, we had to write some stuff. And my yeah. mom's. Oh, I mean, I, I pay attention to Rob's Queenie stuff, and Rob yeah, pays attention to my Queenie mm -hmm. stuff. So that's it. Uh, Downton Abbey fine movie experience. Five, and, five uh, teacups, four teacups. Uh, based on the whole movie experience with the ladies in back of us, I said that's why. Uh, you know, and I hate to say this, Northern Virginians, but I said, well, there's an experience you'd never get in Fairfax, and you're, you're right. right. You're right. You wouldn't. You wouldn't get people having that much fun. It, it just no, but you uh, would get you Joyce know. being pissed off. Yeah, could be mad. yeah, yeah. Could, uh, it would be. Could you take our picture, and then you hand the camera back? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that's what it would you be. You didn't but give I, us but, a rating. 
Uh, yeah. Rating, I'll give you... Uh, How many pissed off Joyce's? I give it four out of five stars. Yeah, four that's pretty strong. Stars. That that's pretty is strong. strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for Downton Abbey fans, it, you know, you could do a, a lot worse. I might have been affected because Carla's looking at her watch like towards the last half. Quick hour, follow up: if you are hour. just uh, a casual fan or less, if you don't know the plot structure or the characters of Downton Abbey from the TV you can, show, you can sit down. You and will watch still it enjoy from start it? to finish. Okay, that's Absolutely. good. That's good filmmaking. Though. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's complete. In fact, Carla said that. She okay. said that I, I completely uh, was engaged because I knew the plot. You don't have to be a fan of the movie to uh, the right. TV show to watch the movie. Now, uh, now, as we continue on things you don't care about, ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for our second week of Nostalgia Corner Ooh. with yes. Mr. Rob Spiewak. And uh, Rob, don't you have music for I this? I do, but I'm going to, I have to ramp up to the music because I have all a question right. I need to ask you. One okay. of your favorite directors of all time, his name is Stanley Kramer. He directed Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which attacked okay. racism. He also directed The Defiant Ones, which also attacked racism. He talked mm-hmm. about creationism and Inherit the Wind. talked about fascism and Judgment at Nuremberg. He also produced The Cane Mutiny and High Noon. He also was concerned that he had a reputation as being a heavy-handed filmmaker because of all these heavy topics. So he started a project called Something a Little Less Serious. Have you ever heard of it? No, no, because mm-hmm. by the time it hit the screen, sorry, I was having a little drink while you were doing. By the it. time I was it you, I thought you were taking the ball. By the you time it hit the screen, on me. see when I'm doing this, don't uh, ask me. Well, question. Oscar could have said no. Well, uh, I was eating my snack. I understand. Wrong snack. It became a project called <laughs> "It's a Mad, 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 Mad World." Now I okay. teased it earlier this week as the greatest comedy ever made. Now, not the funniest comedy ever made. Which I think belongs to some other movie, maybe Blazing Saddles, maybe Mel Brooks. But May when you I talk, stop ab- you right there, please. How can the greatest comedy ever be made? Uh, ever made be the, not the funniest comedy? Ever? Because when I'm using great, I'm talking about size and scope. Huge. Oh, a comedy the, the has, largest has never been attacked on this scale at this point in the history of Hollywood. This is 1963. They actually shot in the summer of 62. They had to shoot in the summertime because that's when all the television shows were on hiatus, and that's where they got their huge cast. And I'm going to run down this cast of stars as fast as I can. This is Rob Spiewak's Nostalgia Corner, What's ladies the movie gentlemen. called again? The movie is called It's a Mad, 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 Mad mm. World. And you know what? It actually... I may have gone to see it in the theater Ooh. with my father. It, uh, it might has... be the other film that I forgot that I went to see with my dad. I may have gone to see that it, but and, I was so little I don't remember. And Caligula. That was not Caligula. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> the thing, <laughs> this has a small sort of correlation to last week's movie, uh, The Maltese Falcon, oh. because this also has a MacGuffin. They're all searching for $350,000 cash. Oh, we explain the, plot. the MacGuffin again. The please. MacGuffin is a plot point in which yes. something that is not necessarily plot driven gets the ball rolling. Everyone has a common interest in the MacGuffin. Like so, a chase or a hunt yeah. or oh, like something they're run. all after. Cannonball Run. The MacGuffin is getting to the end of the race. There we exactly. go. Oh, there it is. All right. Yes, the, so the listen race. to this list of stars, all right? All right. Spencer Tracy, Milton Berle. No, stars? too many for no. dinging. Too many for right, dinging. Spencer Tracy, Milton Berle, Sid Caesar, Buddy Hackett, Ethel Merman, Mickey Rooney, Dick Sean, Phil Silvers, Terry Thomas, Jonathan Winters, Edie Adams, Dorothy Provine, Eddie Anderson, Rochester from the Jack Benny Show, Jim Backus, Ben Blue, Joe E. Brown. Now, these are people at this time, they were the most powerful and popular comics in Hollywood. It continues with Barry Chase, William Demarest, Andy Devine, Selma Diamond, Peter Falk, Norman Fell, Paul Ford, Stan Freeberg, Leo Gorsi, Sterling Holloway, Marvin Kaplan, Edward Everett Horton, Buster Keaton, Don Knotts, and Mike, the Three Stooges. And that's the not even. The Three Stooges were in Mad, Mad, Mad. That's World? not even a complete list of all the stars Don that were Knotts in it. Don Knotts from Morgantown, West Virginia. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Very and good. Known as Go Mountaineers. The Andy Griffith Show. Barney yeah. Fife. Uh huh. Who was the biggest star in the movie? The biggest Don star Knotts. was uh, Spencer Tracy. Oh. And it was Spencer right. Tracy's last film. They had to sort of condense his filming to nine days because he was literally dying while okay. he made the film, but he was Stanley Kramer's favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie does actually hold up as a plot device. What happens, essentially, eight motorists see a guy crash his car, and his dying words are, there's $350,000, and it's buried under a big W. Ooh. And they have to go find it. And it is... How come there's so many people that know that? Well, eventually they have to form liaisons, and they have uh, they collude okay. and get together, and that's All how right. they get everybody involved. It has some of the most advanced at the time aerial photography ever done, and was also shot in a process. Let me get the name of it exactly right. Yeah, I want to make sure so I can write that down. Mike, it was shot. Thank you very much. In seventy millimeters Cinerama. 
which was one of Cinerama. The, a huge form. It was shown at the Cinerama, Cinerama Dome in Hollywood. That's where the premiere was. That's that big sort of, it's, it's a dome looking theater. You see it, I believe, yeah. on Hollywood Boulevard. That's yeah, where the, the premiere Hollywood was. Bowl. No, not the Hollywood Bowl, the Hollywood Dome, the Cinerama Dome. The Hollywood Dome, Dome, yes, not to be confused. And they had a huge rollout for this movie to a point where they're all being pursued by cops through the whole movie. Mm -hmm. During the intermission. Was that the theme of the movie? Yes, it was. That's the overture. It sounds like circus music. Supposed to, because it's the nutty nature of the uh, of the of the mad, mad, mad. Exactly. And, um, and Benny Hill. Mickey Rooney is in that, right? Yes, Mickey Rooney is and great. Is that, in that the movie that you play the clip from that says "We Need Manhattan"? Actually, Get Mike, us Manhattan. That's Jim Backus, and I believe I. And have they're on a plane, no, I, right? I when need he's a drink, there's some ice and stuff back there. Why don't you make us all some old fashions? Old, old fashions. Do you think you ought to drink while you're flying? Well, stop kidding. Will you make us some drinks? I mean, just press the button back there, Mark. Booze. <laughs> It's the only way to fly. <laughs> so the plot point there is that, <laughs> that that's pretty funny. Laugh, right? Buddy Hackett, <laughs> Buddy Hackett, and Mickey Rooney are partners, and uh, they were on their way to Las Vegas when they got uh, swept up into the into the chase. So they think the best way to get to the W first is by airplane. So they right. go to a country club, and the only one who has a plane is Tyler. This guy Tyler is played by Jim Backus, but he plays his character of the uh, snob. Right? But he is yeah. sleeping off a horrible hangover. So they have right. to rouse him from his hangover to get him to fly, and he eventually passes out in the plane, which means <laughs> Buddy Hackett has to fly the plane. There is a you're selling it again. This yeah. is like when you sell one of your concerts. I want to go watch Did, this didn't movie. Didn't Buddy Hackett die with Lou Diamond Phillips in an airplane crash? No, that was, that was Buddy, That's Holly. Buddy Holly. Oh, excuse me. Another so airplane. Sorry. Another yeah, airplane. Lou didn't. Diamond Phillips didn't. Die as uh, as uh, no, it was the real rocker that died. Yeah, it was uh, Buddy okay. Holly died Phillips with played, Richie Valens. Buddy Holly, Richie Valens. Oh, but, yeah, Lou Diamond yeah that's what played. I meant. Richie Valens. So yes, it's not yes. like Gary Busey and Lou Diamond Phillips <laughs> died. <laughs> In and, and Mike, if you really want to go obscure, <laughs> it also killed Gaylord Sartain, who played the big who bopper. Is that? He now, played now, the big see, bopper. You ruined it. No, you ruined it. I made it better for about five <laughs> no, people out didn't. there. Yeah, I know. Um, so people. also, there's a million. There's other stars I didn't mention. Jerry Lewis has a great cameo, um, and Jerry Lewis was quoted as saying later, "He lost five hundred dollars making the movie," and they said, "Why?" Because they were stranded out in the middle of the desert for the majority of the shooting with the stars. The director. Can encourage gambling. Stanley Kramer organized card games, crap games, everything to encourage gambling to keep people on the set, keep them busy from wandering around. So Jerry Lewis, he said, even I bet he, I bet he organized some other stuff too. <laughs> A little right, probably, probably. That would be sex, Rob. I'm sorry that stopped you in your tracks. I, I was saying they probably like brought some broads in. Probably. Yeah, I would think I so. Holes the holes to keep Jonathan Winters busy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking more like Mickey Rooney. Mickey oh, Rooney. Horny Pulse. little Mickey Rooney. Everybody. He did everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Luke Milton Berle with his giant penis. Oh, another thing, if you watch the I'm movie. I'm sorry, I don't want to taint your segment. Milton, or Milton Berle's taint is horrible. If you oh, talk okay. about. All right. Okay. If you watch the movie, notice this. Milton Berle is such a student of show business, and he was a child star. He figures out a way to leave every shot last so he has the most camera time. When you start watching for it, it's frustrating because he'll do some sort of bit of business where he's the last person in every shot. Mm. <laughs> he is set up with because uh, he's a prick that way, right? Oh, absolutely. Rob, yeah, he's an a hole, like a last word guy. And they put him up against with uh, Ethel Merman, who is a fantastic uh, battle axe in this movie. That's not lost on me. <laughs> Sorry. That's you're not. I'm um, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> Ethel Merman probably has the best overall comedic performance in the movie as the battle axe mother in law. Do you have a clip from Ethel Merman? I do. This is her uh, bitching right. about when D Milton Berle this tries. This is funny because Ethel Merman in this movie is such a rhino bitchy oh, woman. It's bitch on beautiful. wheels. Yeah, it's phenomenal the way she plays. I love it. She makes oh, me laugh easy, more than honey. Anything. These things happen. You now, know? what kind of an attitude is that? These things happen. They only happen because the whole country is just full of people who, when these things happen, they just say these things happen. And that's why they happen. Left it up to you. We never hear the last of this thing. Right. You're right. And just you know what those half-wit morons up in Sacramento do about it? They just sit there with their big feet up on their big desks and milk 15 million people of as much grab. Listen, listen. I, I want So, yeah, she is that tempo the entire that. film. Now, um, now, 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 let me just bring up a, a counterpoint for please this. Please do. Please do. Mad, mad, mad world. It, they kind of just let them all go wild, don't they, a little bit? Well, they that's... Really, wasn't a little... The lack of discipline is what I don't like about it. There them. is a little bit of that, but here's something you have to compare... Like Goonies. 
If you hey. no, it's no, it's it's very different than Goonies. You. If you bring it, right. would they ever be able to make a modern all star comedy again? And they've tried. They did a movie called Rat Race, and in a certain way, the remake of Ocean's Eleven is the same thing. But what will prevent it from ever being like this is we've gotten away from an era where every comedic performer in Hollywood has a persona that can be written to. Now, that's probably entertainment-wise an advance because, yeah. you know, Brad Pitt has done, what, three great movies mm-hmm. in the past year with three totally different characters. But mm-hmm. if you're going to put, say, Phil Silvers, who played Sergeant Bilko or is the basis of Top Cat, put him in a movie, he's got to be like this guy. Just... Fellas, I'm glad you're here. Look, I need your help. Here's what happened. I had this blowout. I think there's a spare in the back. It may be a little flat. Take a look at it, will you, kid? Is there an airport any place around here? Look, if the spare is flat, don't bother fixing it. Give me a new tire, all right? You ain't got a new tire, then you'll have to fix the spare. But don't look at me. Move it, will you, kid? You, you can be gassing up on his work. What is it, a staring contest? Come on! Move, move, will you, kid? Come on. See, no one is as defined as that anymore. So really, right. the era of the ability to produce this is gone, and it's sort of a magical time capsule that they were able to capture. It's a very long movie. Uh, depending right. on what cut you see, it can be over three hours long. It had an intermission when it was released. But wow. I can highly recommend the Criterion Studios put out a Blu-ray release that has all the different cuts, many extras, wonderful documentaries. Can you get it digitally? Yes, you can download it digitally, of course. But the, if you okay. want all the extras, it's Criterion number 692. Now, Can you get it like on Netflix? Uh, I don't think it's on Netflix. I think it's a, an Amazon download. I would have Amazon to research it. Maybe on the okay. dark web. It, uh, absolutely on the dark web. And that has all the uh, Mickey Rooney set That's stuff. That's the porn version. Yeah. Um, the thing that you have to know is this, though. It's not a mad, mad, mad. No, I'm not going to say that. Joke. Why would the greatest. The hard, hard, hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Go my, ahead. If the what? movie lasts more than four hours. <laughs> Call a doctor. Call a doctor for your pride position. Why would the greatest comedy of all time not really be considered in the echelon of, you know, the big box office scores? And I have a personal theory about this. It was released on the 7th day of November, 1963, November 7th, 1963. Kennedy assassination. November 22nd, Kennedy was shot. Mm. And for the next roughly five months, America was in no mood to laugh. Mm. And I think the movie was sort of quietly taken out of theaters. Luckily, it's still like right now. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> I get it. How <laughs> dare you? Yeah. But anyway, uh, that is a, I highly recommend the movie. You can watch it over two nights because it is a very long film. All right. I a make kid a should see it. Yeah. For Nostalgia Corner, you have to have a beginning theme and, an, and a closing theme. But you theme mean an actual for theme? Yeah. No, like go look for it. Not today. All right. But, but uh, do you just come up with one since we're yeah. doing this. Mm. I like this one. I was enlightened. I, I would love to hear. And now, you know, it's time for Rob Spiewak's uh, Nostalgia Corner. That was wonderful. And we have just enough time, just a second here, because uh, for the last two weeks, we've been trying to get Adrian Garcia. Right. To, uh, to return our phone calls. He's not only returned our phone calls, he has made his way into the studio and he is here today. As you recall, to join Mike, us. he texted me yesterday. He said, uh, What time does the show start on Friday? I said, Nine. He walked in today at 8.58 and 19 seconds. Very exciting. Adrian, where have you been? Where, yeah, where have you hell? been hiding? At the Hotel Motel Hampton Inn, Mike. Uh, and you're still doing well over there at the hotel, Motel Hampton. There he is. I am Hi. killing it, Mike. Hi there. Hey, you pay- hey wh- what have you been doing at the hotel? Eating French fries? What's um, going on? Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, Mike, my. it is so hard to be fat. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Does the, uh, does the hotel have any... Jesus any-? Louise, what have you been doing? You making Sundays over there? What's going on here? I can guarantee you one thing. Eggs. I don't think the uh, the hotel has a barber shop in it. <laughs> look at him sitting there covering his yeah. up. I, hey, you, you look good. You look good. Yeah. So things are... You don't hate us? You're, you're still... Uh, no. You're, 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 yeah, have you when been listening you just, to the mic, Omer? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oscar, when did you, you decide to, to quit us? I didn't uh, quit you guys. Look, look at Mike. I don't know where to look. He's the boss. Okay, but Mike. you're talking, though. Are you hey, wearing, are you Hi, wearing a, lot, a lot of cologne? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I took public transportation today. I had to, you know. Whoa! Public transportation? <laughs> That's why? Pa- that was part of the reason why I, I wasn't making it in. Was my theory correct? What was your theory? That you lost your license or your mode of transportation because of the law or your payments. Both. Oh! Believe it or not, it's both. Oh! <laughs> you live and you I learn. love him. I love yes! him. I'm so happy you're here. Yes! I'm so happy you came back in. I really am. We missed you. We I you're one you of the interns. You're one of the guys that we have uh you know that I reflected back on and I said, Whatever happened to Adrian? We haven't seen him around for a while. And I just wanted to all I cared about, all I wanted was to make sure you were okay and that you were still okay with us, uh, no matter what it the It didn't the, seem the right without you. It yeah. didn't, it seem, didn't right. seem it's just I mean, just to know that you're there and you're hanging in and uh, yeah, I mean we I were hope scared. you're still we Pop on the show and listen once in a while. You know, I hope you do. And, uh, we were scared you might be somewhere going hungry. Obviously not. 
No. <laughs> no. Right, he's not fat, guys. Come on. Hey, I'm living a good life. Sure. He, he just he clearly he's gained a few LBs. Who has it? Sure. Who Who has is it? the one thing I can control. Continental breakfast. <laughs> did you miss our naked cruelty? Did you make did you miss our naked cruelty? I kind of did actually. I like abuse. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he has told me that in the past yeah. before. Uh, Di- Diego, like yes. what happened with your license? Um, failure to pay my insurance. So they suspended it. Oh, okay. that's such BS, though. I can't believe that because I still had insurance through the hotel to drive the shuttle. Ah, gotcha. But um, not for your personal So vehicle. you no. could commute, but use the shuttle. Exactly. And I've <laughs> done that. big, like, eight-passenger van. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. So in the suburbs of Sterling, you just see my shuttle parked in the neighborhood somewhere. But you can't shuttle anymore because you have no license. Well, I mean, no, they He don't drives know the shuttle home <laughs> and back to work. You know, this is very vague. Do you, do you really drive the shuttle back and forth uh, Allegedly. home? And- Allegedly. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine a Hampton Inn shuttle yeah. parked in your neighborhood for a year straight? Can you imagine hey, a Hampton them. Inn shuttle driving through the Taco Bell drive thru <laughs> 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 They know me for that one reason, because no one can do it with a regular car, and I did it with a shuttle. Oh, so, man, have I missed you. I got that going oh, on. And so what's the prospects of getting the E? What are the prospects of getting your uh, license back? I don't know, Mike. I had a really cute Uber driver today, so I might just stick with it. All right. And okay. believe That's it or an not, answer I'll accept. Yes. I save a lot of money just Ubering to um, here and taking the bus here as well. How much okay, are you so in I arrears mean- for for your insurance? A um, couple hundred. It's honestly not that bad. I can take care you of it. You just don't in- want. You just don't really need a car. Exactly. To be honest, more. It's more problems. More trouble than it's worth. The juice ain't right. worth the squeeze, Oscar. Look at this, look at this guy. <laughs> He's quoting Oscar. Oscar's I like him. He's line. back. Hey, do you have do you have a car though? Like just sitting there? Do you have a car? No, they took it. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> okay, that doesn't matter. The, the repo People. man, Rob. I'm, but I'm wondering if it was the dealer or an actual repo man. Was, That's what I want to know. Wait, so did your, your insurance go first or your car payment go first? My insurance went first, and then I was driving without insurance for almost a year. Okay. Yeah. And I was coming here. I drove Rob very nice to work to do without that. insurance. And then your car payment went where? South. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> So once you weren't able to drive anymore, why pay it? Right? Exactly. Pay exactly. Well, uh, can I ask you this? Yeah. Because I've had friends in uh, when I was much younger uh, lose their cars to the repo man. When and how did they take it? Um, this one, I was this time. I was just I accepted it. I didn't care. I just didn't care. Um, You're not answering the question. They took it around maybe ten o'clock at night. At night. Did you know they were there taking it? No, I did not. Okay. I woke up and it was gone. <laughs> so, but the job at the Hampton yeah. uh, still still working for you. I, I mean am. you. You're happy that you're the man over there. I'm I would the imagine. man over there, there, exactly. Yep. Three to um, eleven. Three to eleven. Prime time. That's it. And so. Do you think uh, you know that you're going to be there for the foreseeable future? You like you like working there? Uh, it's so stressful. I hate it. I mean, I like helping people. I like making people feel good and making people feel at home. But it's, I mean, it takes a lot out of you to do that for eight hours for 170 well, you know how to people. Though you know how to relax. Well, I know. Yeah. Right? And making people <laughs> feel good every day, Mike, is nothing we're strangers to. Yes. <laughs> Every single day. Well, it's good to see you. I'm glad yeah, you're I'm happy. Yeah. Are, you you hate us. Are you listening to the show? Yes, and I heard you guys call the hotel, and you guys okay. harassed my colleague. What's his name? We, well, that, that was like 14. That was like 14 rings. Yeah. That was like 14 also, rings. That he, was crazy. There, there are pronouncers in this world yeah. that we should all understand. He's yes. foreign. Yes. Yeah, well, so am I. See, so am I. Yeah, yeah, but the man couldn't say. What couldn't he say? Available. Available. Yeah, I know. You guys thought he said label or something. Any label. I listen. Yeah. Uh, I have a label. I have a label. How was Sony otherwise? He told me it was because he had a huge line in front of him and he was trying to get you guys on hold so he can check was out. It, was other it people, people oh. or blow? Um, <laughs> depends on who you ask, Rob. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Adrian, do yes, not Mike. be a stranger. Uh, I won't. Uh, are you hanging around for a while today or are you going to get right back? All right. Well, uh, I'll, you know, I'll so, over you home as well. I wanted to see I'll, if I can I'll... finagle myself a ride from you guys. Home. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. You're the it's man. Friday. We miss Somebody you. Somebody give Love us a miss ride. You. Great, great to see you again. I'm glad you're happy. I'm glad everything's right. Are you happy? Are you happy? That's the main question. I'm alive. I'm okay. It's oh, been a really tough okay. week at the hotel this week, and it brought me down. What about love? Guys, yeah, can we do something nice someone. for Adrian today? Yeah, 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 Lunch yeah, yeah. or something yeah, 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 like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. All right. Pizza? Thank yeah. you. Steaks? Yeah, yeah, make sure it's steaks. Steaks. What the hell? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Shrimp? Based on what I'm seeing, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it's important to you now. I can tell by looking at you. All right. Well, uh, let's start the show. <laughs>
start the show, Rob. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. I suggest that we stack the bodies in the cellar, lock it, leave quietly one at a time, and pretend that none of this has ever happened. Great idea. I'll leave first, if you don't mind. Be my guest. In fact, I think we all owe you a vote of thanks. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly good fellow, for she's a jolly... I told you I didn't do it. But what if the authorities find out what happened? The FBI will take care of that. You mean my phone call for Mr. Hoover? I work for him, of course. How else could I have known everything about you all? There's still one thing I don't understand. One thing? Who was Mrs. Peacock taking bribes from? A foreign power. Her husband, the senator, has influence over defense contracts. Is there going to be a cover-up? Isn't that in the public interest? What could be gained by exposure? But is the FBI in the habit of cleaning up after multiple murder? Yes. Why do you think it's run by a man called Hoover? Oh, Mrs. Peacock. How did you know my name? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, take her away. What's worth, we got her. You see, like the Mantis, we always get our man. Mrs. Peacock was a man? <coughs> Would anyone care for fruit or dessert? This is Wade Byard, the public information officer for Loudoun County Public Schools. The Mike O'Meara Show has decided to start now. Please make all necessary arrangements to listen. This is the Mike O'Meara Show with Mike O'Meara, Rob Spiewak, and Oscar Santana. And now, without further delay, here's Mike O'Mara. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What was that from? That's uh, Clue. That was, um, oh, that's Jason Clue Bateman. Mad Mad World. My God, your footprint, your giant Birkenstock footprint is on this show today. Well, that's Jason sure. Bateman just announced he's remaking the movie Clue. Oh, that's so right. it's actually right. in the news right now, and I'm yes. curious to see what direction he's going to go with it. This is this first segment is a lot of Rob Spiewak. Ooh, in, in too much, this, uh, if you ask this me. This next uh, fruitcake, <laughs> some might say. Uh, from uh, Rodothi, North Carolina, to Bug Tussle, Texas. Pee Wee, West Virginia. Hello, Pee Wee. Hi, Pee Wee. Uh, Exeter, New Hampshire, Frogstown, Pennsylvania. Zurich, Switzerland. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by our Fruitcake Futures. Yes. Once again, a, a Rob Spiewak presentation. Look at you. An actress poised for a huge comeback. Yes. You were loved in Chicago. You won an Oscar uh, for Cold Mountain. And now you return in the pill-popping propelled biopic, Judy. Judy! S say <laughs> hey, Renee. There's already Oscar buzz for your performance. Your stardom has never been Zell bigger. <laughs> and why not? America loves a faded Hollywood flower that pops pills like bubble wrap. And once threw a butcher knife at her kids. True. Based on that alone, certainly we should let it let you order a TMOS signature fruitcake after the September 30th deadline, right? You ask, pretty please, with Zoloft on top. But you are denied. Oh no! And you know, and you know why, Renee? Why? Because you're not special, and you have a small mouth. Oh. There's nothing keen or notable about you. No second chance. No exceptions. You're not special, no matter how hard you're Bridget Jonesing for a fruitcake. Mm. No can do after the 30th. So immediately, go to our website and buy as many as you can, uh, RZ. MikeOmeraShow.com. That's where you go. Click the banner. And don't think you can fool us by getting drastic plastic <laughs> surgery so you no longer look like yourself. We're watching you, Irene. <laughs> Rescue a fruitcake right now. Gary Grimble. That might be the most hateful one of all. Last time, we'll yeah, hear one. Yeah, no, so we have one more it. because it's uh, midnight on Monday. We have one oh, more. Oh, we have, we have all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Obaked One. Baked one. Mm -hmm. be, uh, Thank special. you, Obaked One. Hey, everybody. Uh, we, we're going to get right to it. We're not going to get them all, but uh, we're going to try like hell. Uh, it's our Yaks on Friday. We don't do Yaks on Friday, but let's do it right Yak now. Attack. Out of the gate, the first question is about strippers. So we had to start with that on the TMOS Yak Shack, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Hi, this is Amanda from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hi. I'm 
calling about Mike's Hustlers review, which I agree with wholeheartedly. I love the movie. Um, kind of was also curious about the general lack of nudity yep. in the movie about strippers, although I do appreciate that they prioritize the women's stories over their bodies. You have a question. I've never been to a stripper club. Do the dancers really carry persons on stage with them? That was, to me, the weirdest detail. When you see Constance Wu walk out with, like, a strappy evening bag, but what do they put in the purses? That's not where the tips go, I think, right? And uh, are there cell phones in there? What are they doing with the purses? Is that a thing? I'll hang up and listen. Good day. Thank you, lady. Uh, Thank we you. appreciate lady. it from uh, Bridgeburg. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, lady. Hey. Uh, Oscar's raising his hand, so he's probably got an answer for you. They do bring purses up. Well, right? they have okay. to because um, th- th- two things can happen. One is a gentleman can walk up, and uh, it's creep factor 10 in my eyes, right. and they can put the dollar bills in uh, what would be uh, a, a little- The not, garter. The garter. The garter, okay. right? Uh, or the G-string, wherever. Who knows where they put it? Right. Uh, I wouldn't know, Mike, because I'm a guy that's just, uh, creepily in the back of the room. It I don't could like to be. If there. it's a Western <laughs> theme act, it could be a holster. Um, there's also a theme that seems to be very popular, I've heard, is that some people like, some gentlemen like to go and make it rain. And they make it rain right. by make, by throwing dollar bills, hopefully not just dollars or tens or twenties for the young lady sure. that's working there, and right. it will fall on the stage. So yeah. at the end of her set, she has to have a bag to put all the dollars into her satchel. Isn't that right. Al Roker's move at a strip club? Because he's a weather guy. <laughs> he uses yeah. quarters to make it rain. <laughs> quarters. quarters. Yeah. Warm quarters. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Uh, anybody interested in some ham? Would yes, you like some always, ham? Always. Let's have, let's have some ham. This is Jake Ham with two M hey. of the Vienna ham. Ooh. Just calling to let you know the TMOS is, is ruining my life all day. I've been working with buttons. And talking to my coworkers about buttons, but I can't just say button. I have to say, it's the button. <laughs> the button is broken. The button. That's- Always fun to hear that. from a ham. I Always that. fun. It is. Always yeah. fun to yeah. get yeah. a ham. Uh, this Vienna next ham. call is simply entitled Help. Hey, Mike. It's Frank from Brantford. Oh. I just thought I would help you guys out. And if- Okay, I can explain why I put help. Why? The help is coming from me. Okay. <laughs> Help! There's a problem with people um, being afraid to either come to the studio or come to your house. I'll come to both your house and the studio. I've I've paid for the um, fruitcake, which I hate, and I'm hoping it's good because I think um, Rob may know what he's doing. Um, So I'm just throwing that out there, you know, I'll cover for anybody who doesn't want to go. I'll come twice. I'll come to the studio and to your house. Thanks, bud. <clears throat> help. Hey, you're going to need some uh, help. Just know yeah. that there is a caller ID on all these calls. That's we'll right. never call you back unless it's the tone of that call. And, Mike, <laughs> just for fun, after the show, send me a picture of yourself holding today's newspaper. Just for fun. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, this next call, yes, he like Rob. I don't know what this means. Hey, Mike, it's Frank from Branford again. Oh, it's Frank. Oh, great. Yes, he I likes Rob. Call. I just um, was watching, uh, what's his name there? Rob do his nostalgia thing, and I just find it fascinating. I love hearing all the details. He clearly knows what he's talking about. His there you go. Yeah. Like, it's great to have a target audience, isn't it? They're not very thoughtful. Um. And I'm just really glad you're giving him that mm-hmm. chance to shine, and, and it helps to offset his his challenges with his comedic timing, often stepping on your rhythm. Mm. Yeah, I said it. Can't wait for the fruitcake, though. Really, <laughs> yeah. I haven't had fruitcake in what 30 years. So I guess this will be a new experience because evidently Rob does something different with the fruitcake, and I hate to know what that is. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Frank. You know, I'm amazed he had time to call twice, what with all the time he spends with the lotion. (laughs) Hey, you want to hear from the main guy? Yes, 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 please, please. please. Let's hear from the main guy. Mike, how's it going, buddy? YBK here, that's right. Good boy, Kenny Buck. (laughs) Crack it down here. Beautiful freezing. Look up 38 degree temperatures. I guess something's going to go bad for old YBK, huh? Anyway, I'm calling. I'm just watching the Today Show, and uh, Al Roker is on with his uh, new hip. 
just had it done yesterday, I guess, and he's walking around making a big deal of it. Thought of you, Mike. Thought of you and all the trouble you had with your hip. Yeah. Bastards. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, it's not. Sorry, I don't have any better content for you, buddy. <laughs> I don't even know if you even want to put this on, to be honest. I'll put it on. Yeah. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I'd let it through. But anyway, thinking of you, man. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Oscar. People have been really racist to you lately. I'm, of course, a couple shows behind. That guy that called you a Mexican or whatever. What a chooch. <laughs> I hope these guys show up in Vegas. <laughs> I'd like to have a talk about racism, genetic race versus cultural race. <laughs> now I'm rambling. Yep. All right, man. Mike, tell everybody I said hi. Yeah, we will. <laughs> absolutely, we will. The very uh, notion that it's on the radio, we really don't need to tell everyone that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, that's fit, fitting uh, one. It'll take one more, and then we got to go to All break. All right. Mike said, by the bonus, I don't want to miss behaving. <laughs> Rob made a fruitcake, I don't like them misbehaving. <laughs> Maddie wanted cheese, I wouldn't give her a slice. Oscar's mom is always very nice. My sister's used my Harry's for her shaving. <laughs> Just one little pee, one drinking and misbehaving. <laughs> <laughs> that On that note, that's good. Yeah, that's the start of the action. We got more of them coming wow. up on your fabulous Friday show right here on the Michael Barrett Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> ah, it's the most wonderful time of the year, fruitcake time. It's back again, folks. TMOS Fruitcake Futures. 2019, yeah, once in a year chance to snag a signature Rob Spiewak fruitcake. Orson, can you emphasize the word snag? Get me a jury and tell me how to emphasize the word snag and I'll eat your b- Get ready to place your order for the taste of the holidays. They taste even better than you remember them. Two big ways to purchase and support TMOS, including deluxe packaging and exclusive new collectibles and more TMOS fruitcake futures. The holidays start right now. Oh, I have to go big pop. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Brought to you by Cornerstone. Hey, let me talk to you about Tappable, okay? Yeah. Tappable Home Equity. All right, Cornerstone wants you to know that there are $6.3 trillion lying out there in Tappable Home Equity in the United States. That is the highest amount in Tappable Equity ever in the history of mankind. So, the time has come to tap it. Tap it good. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Uh, plus, rates are at their lowest level in three years. So almost every homeowner in the country can benefit with a refi right now, but you need to call our friends at Cornerstone First Financial. They are in the building yes. at Podcast Village. They're down on the bottom floor. They're good people. We know them personally. You will love them, too. Our listeners have great stories about dealing with Cornerstone. And by the way, they will guarantee to meet or beat any competitor. Some restrictions apply, but if you are in the market for a refi or a new mortgage or you need to take out some equity or eliminate PMI, do yourself a favor and call them at Cornerstone to go over your specific situation. Cornerstone, licensed in California, Maryland, Virginia, D.C., Georgia, Florida, and Colorado. Click their banner or call them at 8662. I always have trouble with that, especially when I'm drinking my liquid IV. <laughs> Lemon lime came in yesterday. Sorry. Uh, call Cornerstone at 86. Uh, really? <laughs> it's got three sixes. 866-625-1221. Perfect. That's 866-625-1221. Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing. Let's get right back to the act. Uh, you want to take a call from a local down here? I do. Uh, yeah, this, this is a close call right here. When I mean close call, Ooh. well, go ahead and listen. Hi, guys. This is Bill from San Carlos Park, Florida. Yes, that's San Carlos Park, Florida. I can't wait to go get a facial from Carla. Oh. Hopefully she does a really good job. And I look years younger, and I can't wait to run into Jim so I can say, "You too, you got a facial from Carla too." <laughs> Have a good day. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. She'll uh, take and you too. I don't want to say she's taking all the comers, but uh, hey, hey, hey! All right, uh, we got some resume help now on the action. Excellent, Mike, Rob, Oscar, and Jesus. 
I was listening to the podcast the other day, Mike, doing Carla's resume, and for the lapse in gap, what I've heard, the thing to do is put list end-of-life care or elder care. I get it. And it looks good on a resume. I get it. Okay. So you might want to add that in at least for some portion of time. Elder care. To yes. pad the document yeah. so okay. she can get a better job okay. when it's time for it. <laughs> okay. Take care. When it's time. That's two references true, to my true, yeah. imminent death. True there we go. story. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, God. I need a palate cleanser. Please. How about a lady? Hey, yeah. TMOS. I'm Susan calling from Fresnick, Maryland. Thank you so much for publishing my letter about Wayne Newton being related to our Padawatomac tribe. Remember. Mm. Just so we don't get the other tribe calling up and being upset, he is also from Cherokee Heritage. He's part from what they call the Powhatan tribe, which is Padawatomac, because he's descended from the chief Powhatan, but he's also partially Cherokee Indian. So I just want to make sure... The other tribe doesn't call up and get really upset. Mm, mm. Bye. <clears throat> we don't want to. We don't want a tribal war on our hands. That's we for We want to sure. make sure everyone is happy. So is I he simply... a Grand Cherokee? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only if he has a thousand dollars. Cherokee Grand Cherokee. <laughs> Oscar made a Rob joke. He did. That's a, a dad grand joke. Cherokee. That's a and dad joke. Out. And he's enjoying it because yeah. puns are enjoyed by the deliverer, not the people that get <laughs> no, them. No, they're, they're uh, both the most selfish form of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> they are indeed. <laughs> I, this next call, I just like this guy. Okay. Hey, Mike just said uh, he got a Walmart birthday cake for Carla and that he uh, has officially gone trash. Yep. He doesn't want to go back. And right. man, ain't that... The freaking truth, man. Once you go trash, you never go back. Amen, brother. And then you start to see all the people that do it the other way. Right. And it just irritates you. It just makes you sick to see the amount of bull crap people do when they could just run into a freaking store, pick up a cake, go home, and have a good time. It's right. all just a crock, man. Happy birthday to Carla. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Let's like bring that, that phrase back. A crock. That's a crock. <laughs> That's a crock. That's a crock. Wait, is, a crock. Wait, is he alluding to someone that go may go to an artisanal bakery? Yeah, and I'm get, sure. And, compared and just to just go and getting a cake at the grocery hoops, store. Yeah. Go to the you know, okay. go to the, the, the Walmart, pick up a cake, go home, have a good time. Yeah, exactly. Like if you go if you uh, go to a place that's called like sweets. That's a crock. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How many cupcakeries did they have I... when that TV show came on? Right. And you go to these lazy people that thought they were going to do the same because they watch television oh, all each the time. And every morning, and they'd have two. They'd have two cupcakes in the uh, bakery section. Each and every know? morning, I take a left on Thirty Third Street in Georgetown, and I see the rubes waiting for the Georgetown John Cupcake Cupcakes. Factory to open up, and I want to roll down my window and go. <laughs> Go home! You're not <laughs> helping yourself! The only exception are the TM West fruitcakes. Yes. Fruitcakes are different. It's, it's different. a whole it's, different it's, animal. You know the guy that's baking them. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take another Florida caller. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Mike at Homestead. And I just had an oh, my God, OMG <laughs> moment uh, listening to uh, Mike do the news about the Merriam Dictionary in 533 or whatever new words to the dictionary. Uh, yeah, that's what we need, a dumbass dictionary. Uh, seems to me that the DAs that are using these 533 words probably don't even know what a dictionary is. But, you know, when I think about it, for older folks like me, maybe we do need a dumbass dictionary so I can look up and... Words that I don't know what the hell they're saying, right. and I might actually understand what they're trying to say okay. using a language that's not quite English. Okay, you're, you're walking on the beach. Now. All right, What's that's going? my rant for this week. Oh, okay. good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Hey, you I probably should it. get off of his lawn as well. <laughs> get off of my lawn. Utah, weighing in, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, guys, this is Drew from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm just calling because I uh, realized in the last couple of weeks we've had uh, some callers from the Salt Lake area, Dan Cortez, from Salt Lake City, Utah, has uh, called several times. <laughs> and then last week, uh, there was Marianne from Midvale 
Uh, well, Marianne, I also live in the beautiful suburb of Midvale, just outside of Salt Lake. Okay, that's great. Nice. Uh, we got to take a break. I, I'm I thought sorry, he was trying to make a love it. connection. No. Well, oh, oh, he, oh, oh no, I don't know. Well, no, I didn't stop. Lake, oh no, I can't play the whole thing. Oh, like, no. It's a minute. It's a minute and forty-five seconds. I can't do it. Well, get right? on the I'm internet, sorry. find her boner, have a good time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. Come back with more uh, of your yaks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I am going to try to sprint. These next yaks will be abbreviated, okay. and I will try to sprint to the finish line. You can't all have a minute and a 20 seconds. It doesn't work that way. We'll be right back. It's Angie Goff with a new Oh My Goff show out now. Tired of Baby Shark? Not so fast. It might be the secret to getting your kids to fall asleep. Baby Shark. The show gets a little weird also when we get a visitor from outer space and we're going Greek. Don't worry, Mike. We saved you some baklava. Subscribe to the Oh My Golf Show now on YouTube or Apple Podcast. Opa! Hey. Is that because I'm fat? Uh, welcome back to the Mike I don't think so. Show. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't think so. Uh, this section of the program, this section, uh, brought to you by uh, Legacy Box. Isn't it time to digitize your lifetime of memories? Yes. Rob's done it. Oscar's yes, done it. Yes, I've done yes. it. Look, you got a lot of stuff laying around. You got videos. You got pictures. Mm-hmm. You hey, might the have tapes, some, Mike. You got to get might rid have of them. Vintage tapes lying around. You might have vintage pictures oh, lying around. Legacy Box can help you. Legacy Box. Uh, you can send your all your good stuff, your treasures, to Legacy Box, and you will get them back, digital files, in a few weeks, and they keep you updated at every step of the process. Legacy Box is the world's largest, most trusted digitizer of home movies and photos. Over 450,000 families have trusted Legacy Box. They have over a decade of experience, and all the work is done by hand right here in the USA. There's never been a better time to digitally preserve your memory Memories, visit LegacyBox.com today to get started. For a limited time, our listeners can get a huge exclusive discount uh, to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. Get 40% off your first order. Get started preserving your past. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS and save 40% today. And thank you, Legacy Box. We appreciate it. Uh, we got a call from the uh, Red Sox uh, on the uh, not oh, the Red Sox. The um, entire team. About, about the Red Sox. Okay. I have no idea what this is about. Let's, uh, let's get it right now. I just want to say thank you, Boston Red Sox fans, for being so re- respectful tonight uh, for the San Francisco Giants coach, Bruce Bochy. Oh, 20, 2000. He had his 2000th win, and you guys were awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, mm. Sox do that. Yeah, yeah the Sox fans do that. I get that. Yeah, Sox fans are usually when there's a milestone from the opposing team. Mm. They usually, they did it. If you can do it with the Yankees, they can do it with anybody. Sure, That's sure. The way did you goes. see the Bryce uh, Harper situation where? No, Harper. what is that? Uh, What's so going on with that? On Monday night when I was at the game, they booed Bryce Harper. Yeah. On, on I guess, on Tuesday, or they had a doubleheader. They closed out the, they clinched the wild card berth. Right. And it, I guess they went overboard. Now, I don't know what overboard is these what days. What do you mean overboard? With the well, celebration? With uh, the taunting of Bryce Harper. And he actually talked about it afterwards. Now, I I don't know how to feel about this because, yeah, of course you don't want anybody to be bullied, but the guy went to another team. He uh, left yeah, the team Bryce, another and team. Bryce, and Bryce Harper's a dick. Uh, Bryce yeah. Harper's always been a dick. Bryce Harper's been a dick since he came into the league. And he got he's what? He's not a good guy. He's not a guy. $350 million to yeah, leave? He's not... He's not the kind of guy. He got him fights with his teammates. He got him fights with other people. He's an angry dude. He's always giving that vibe off. That's why they give him crap. And then so if you're a personality where you're abrasive and you go to the opposition. Abrasive. That's the way. A guy like Dave Roberts, who went to the opposition, came back to Fenway and they gave him so a standing ovation. So I'll give you another example. There's, a, a, I would say, a 13-year-old kid sitting in front of us at the, at the Phillies game right. on Monday night. And he had a Harper jersey on or, or whatever. A Nationals Harper jersey? Uh, yeah, not, but it said he actually put a piece of tape on there. It said <laughs> loser instead of Harper. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, that comes with the territory. But, but, That's the way it goes. But are we in a place, and again, I don't have all the details, but it, are we in a place where you can't raz a player that's coming back from— Of course you can but, yeah. uh, but why I'm was say- he upset? I'm saying in the PC generation. No, he raised the hell out of him. Right, right? Bryce Harper. You got to, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the and the Nats won without him, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, because which you know is what? Great, great for the Nats. Three hundred fifty million dollars will buy him a lot of Kleenex. Let's ask Bryce Harper what he thinks. All right, uh, Bryce. Uh, Bryce, what do you feel about this? Hey, my name is uh, Long Time. My nickname is Long Time 
loser listener from oh, Roanoke, Virginia. See, okay. Loser. Um, I bring the show up every day on Stitcher, <laughs> and I see through you, 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 bail out. Bryce. Bryce. Bryce, what happened to you, What's Bryce? That? I don't understand. Is he picking up a Philadelphia accent? <laughs> Let's change the uh, sports subject please, to please. football. Football call. Hey, this is Scott. I'm calling from Batavia area. Mikey. Oh, you don't like to be called Mikey. Mike, congratulations on your Giants win. Holy mackerel. That's fantastic, brother. Good luck in the future. Thank you. I appreciate that. I couldn't wait any longer for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, we got a Rob fan. Rob, uh, oh, Oscar, you want to hear a yes, Rob please. fan? Here That's what go. Oscar Hi, wants. Hi, this is Lori from Rochester. I was just listening to a program on the radio, and they were talking about a uh, movement among young people, teenagers, um, that are um, supporting uh, Come climate on. change. And... Um, I can't do it. I can't do it. It takes I appreciate, too long. I appreciate the Sorry. love. Thanks, Lori. Sorry about that. Uh, we have a beer critique. Yes, yes, Oscar. I have a quick yes. update on the Bryce Harper situation. Oscar, who never has a stopwatch yes, anywhere, yes. anywhere I, near I, him I, I, I during apologize. the show. I apologize. Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes. Apparently, they heckled his wife and his son. So. Oh, that's not, see, that's not <laughs> cool. That's not cool. That was the little detail I would have liked to have when I was lambasting um, Bryce Harper. Is that why you went to it? Yeah, I wanted because to confirm. A, I wanted to confirm no, I knew what you was going on. You know, that sucks. He's one month old. That's embarrassing. He's not going to remember. That's one month old. That, that's, his wife? They're heckling his wife? Come on. That's that's like, That sucks. That, well, you know, he's from Philadelphia, so he should be used to that behavior. But when you heckle a one-month-old, that seems low. Yeah, that's a little little rough. Did uh, they you throw want a batteries critique? at him? Rob Spiewak, you want no a beer No batteries critique? were thrown. Okay, Words hurt, Rob. Yes, right. play, bring, bring the beer. Beer critique. Hi, Mike. This is Kerry from Rochester. I have such a beef with Rob and his lack of understanding when it comes to craft beer or beer in general. It's so frustrating when he mentions the high ABV of anything over 6% alcohol. Rob, the majority of beers on the market are over 6% alcohol, yet you act like when someone drinks a 6% or above ABV, they're going to get hammered in two beers. Dude, for a guy who understands liquor the way that you do, you should know that that's not the case. It's going to take a guy four, six, likely eight or ten beers at 6% plus ABV to actually feel anything when compared to an old-fashioned or something similar. Why do you act like things are so crazy when somebody's drinking a 6% beer? Could you stop, please? Question mark? All right, there you go. All right, well, first uh... of all, you're a guy named Carrie, and I don't care for that name very much, and it's a chick (laughs) name anyway. (laughs) But what I'm saying is this, is the majority of beer out there is not above 6%. The biggest selling beer in the world is Bud Light, and that's at a 4.8, so you're wrong there. And it has much to do with the body weight, so I don't care if you're a big, fat loser and you can drink 12 beers without getting drunk. (laughs) Hooray for you. Go drink some, you know, devil's piss beer or whatever craft beer you're drinking this week that tastes like hops and barley and all that garbage. And have a good time and enjoy you your go. loneliness. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, that was strong. Jeez. I like that. Uh, next, I th- oh, Rob, I think we got a double shot. I Bring think it. we got a double shot Bring here. Bring it. Hi, Mike, Rob, and Oscar, as well as Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. This is Carrie from Rochester. Oh, same guy. And I same just wanted guy. to mention that I am the biggest Buffalo Bills fan Ooh. that there is. Same guy? So, I think so. I'd like to meet your father one day. But anyway, <laughs> that's what? not the reason for my call. Hey, Rob, can I please explain to you... That's the same that dude. ...beers that are above 6%. That's the yeah, same you know, guy, you know for what? God's sake. I, he was, I think he called back drunker. Same was, take, different call? He was talking uh, slower the first one we heard. Maybe a different phone, too. The one next to the sofa. Uh, all right, this is uh, Chuck <laughs> E. Oh, Mike, that's I, stuck I, in Chuck the sofa. E. <laughs> Chuck E. Hi, Robert from Las Vegas. Uh, the, talking about... On September 19th, about Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. When you said 8,000 tickets, they usually equal out to about $80 if you talk to the people behind the counter. Jesus. You can actually pay cash. It's a penny per ticket. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Penny Hmm. per ticket. How would you like to get a brand new helicopter for a penny (laughs) a ticket? (laughs) 
Uh, this next one, this is dangerous ground. Uh-oh. It says racist with a question mark. Oh no. oh, no. So I'll read it the way I wrote it. Okay. Racist? This is Roger from Florida. I'm a scientist who studies alien cultures, and you need to understand that uh, these off-worlders who settled centuries ago in Central America, their descendants are not looking to take over. They're looking for a safe place where they can raise their families, uh, eat some tacos, and watch soccer. Oh, I get Now, it. my colleagues and I believe the name of their home planet is actually Chimichanga. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't make this stuff up, but we see as... Uh, a delicious concoction of meat and vegetables and yummy Latino spices is actually a, a planet beyond our solar system. Is he doing racist Roger. stick? Yes. He's drawing a parallel between like illegal aliens and yeah. outer space aliens. Oh, Sir, Jesus. And it's What's not funny. Your, uh, right. your bigotry is going to be your 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 downfall. Your exactly. There you go. Yes. Amen. Think of I'm Bryce Harper's little smirked. boy. Yes. He doesn't want to grow up in a world yes. like that, I tainted I by racism. Not have, I should not have smirked at Planet Jimmy. How Trump. dare you? You're so we're much gonna better take than a, the... We're going to take a break, and we will come back with the uh, the, the final group of yaks. And uh, I'm terribly sorry. I apologize for that call. Yes. Wrong with people. <laughs> this week on the Michael Marabona Show. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> This burger tastes a bit old. <laughs> when was it this killed? This is old burger meat. You can keep it. Would you keep it out of the, lo- the f***ing loading dock? Take it away. Take it away and bring me back a chicken nugget. It's disgusting. The Michael Mara bonus show. Because five hours a week just ain't enough. Always available at MichaelMaraShow.com. Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show brought to you by Joybird. Isn't it time to relax and enjoy the best in life? Yes. The best in life is yet to come with Joybird. Shooby dooby dooby. Enjoy your Joybird. Joybird. What is it? They empower you to create the furniture and space. That bring you joy. Mwah. And keep those summer vibes flowing all year long. All over your body. <laughs> all over your living room. Joybird. You get one of a kind furniture crafted to your unique taste, hundreds of styles and options, plus free personal design consultants to achieve your perfect design so that when somebody comes over to your house, they walk in and they go, Isn't this great? Each Joyberg piece is made by hand with care and precision using high-quality hardwood and responsibly sourced materials. And it all comes with a limited lifetime warranty. Now listen to how confident they are at Joybird that you are going to love their furniture. I am not sure about many people that do this. They offer the 365-day, one-year home trial. Sit on it. Sleep on it. Break it in. If you don't love Joybird, return it for a full refund. Yes. And you can even take your joy outside with their unique outdoor collection. Mm. See how Joybird can help you design your dream space. Find your joy today at joybird.com slash TMOS. Create the furniture that brings you joy today at joybird.com slash TMOS. Go to joybird.com slash TMOS and receive an exclusive offer for 25% off your first order by using the code TMOS. And uh, now we have the final series of yaks. You hold uh, in your hands, you, Mike, yeah, the final I, yaks. I didn't get to any of them today, but uh, let me let me see. This is a fruitcake fan, Rob Spiewak. Okay, Rob good. Rob Spiewak. Hello. Fruitcakes. Two out of three guaranteed nocturnal emission free. Oh. You have mm. my guarantee. Nocturnal. Mm. Sort of. Oh, yeah. Buy them. Fruit cakes. Honey, don't laugh at that that loud. <laughs> I don't want to yeah, hear you through soundproof glass. Every one of either. them under the legal limit. Stop it! <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, we have more of You're him. You're a jerk. We've got more. Yes, please. We have more of him. Okay. Hey, Yackers. This is Ryan from Escondido, California. Calling you back again. I just had a question to pose to y'all. Last night I had a bit of a a dream with a fit and some nocturnal situations oh, that no. aren't known for a year old. But uh, <laughs> looking back, I was uh, I was dreaming about my my high school girlfriend and uh, humble brag, you know, I was 15 years old when I lost my virginity. Does does that make me a dirty sex pervert? 
I mean, it seems kind of wrong, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I'll very hang wrong. Up. Calling in about and it seems wrong. I'm just going to hang up. Thank okay, you. yeah, thank you. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh, Cut it short. That. Please. I don't know if that was promoting them or uh, not. I wrote down, I love this call. That's usually uh, That's something a good that I like. That's a good thing. So why don't we play it, okay? Yeah. Hey, Mike, yeah. Rob, Hi. Oscar, Maddie, Ponyboy, Tyler from Manhattan, Kansas, just hanging out on a Saturday night with my family. And we just completed our daughter Jordan's first KiwiCo steam box. And she just wanted to tell you guys real quick what she made. KiwiCo. I made Good. a claw and some fuzzies to pick up with the claw. And we had a lot of fun doing that, so we really wanted to say thank you to you guys for the the uh, tip on the KiwiCo boxes because it made a great seventh birthday present for Jordan. So, Jordan, what do you tell Mike? Thank you, Mike. Love it. And what do you tell Oscar? Yes, yes, Oscar. And what do you tell Rob? F you, Rob. <laughs> oh! oh Come on! Uh, Rob, I have no idea where that came from. They're my favorite. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think he rehearsed that seven-year-old for that? Well, she, right? you know what? I give her credit for the tight cue pickups, but I don't approve of the material. <laughs> that was genius. It was pretty great. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, we have a serious question. I don't know. Late in the act, Jack, but we'll play it anyway. What's up, guys? This is Jeff in Roseville, California, uh, suburb of Sacramento. Not that you care. I've called maybe uh, four times now trying to get through on the yak shack. I am on the air, uh, and I realize that my calls probably just aren't interesting enough. Well, you know what? If you want to get on the air, you might want to get to the question. Yeah, I'm on, terribly please. sorry. Come on, I don't it. need the get bio on it. how many times you can. I'm sorry, but that, and he's going to be furious because I, I think I listened to it long enough where I put it on, but we just don't have All time. Right, right. Uh, let's get to my people, shall we? My people. Hey, yeah. what's up? This is a number one mic guy. Hey. Ooh. F all the rest. Mike is the best. Uh, this is Turbo Man calling from Turbo Sacramento. Man. Hey, remember that documentary where uh, documentary Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad were trying to buy the doll of me for their kid? Yeah, yeah. So guess what? When I go home, my kids have real Turbo Man instead of a doll. Right. Yeah. Huh. Right on. <laughs> Mike guy, out. Hey, here you go. My people. Yeah. My people. And by the way, that was a great jingle all the way was the name of that documentary. The Oscar winning documentary. <laughs> wasn't it? it changed the way the toy industry worked. It's a very, very exciting. Uh, next call simply entitled, I don't know. When I write okay. that down, I, like that. I just mm. don't know. Hello, I'm footballer Rob Spiewick, and I'm so very humble. I just make the picks and I just stay Humble Mr. Almera, or should I say Master Almera? Oh, I'm so very humble. Rob Spiewak, footballer, ouch. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't football, really like the football know. picks. Well, yeah, but footballer, doesn't that normally mean soccer? soccer. Yeah, 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 we're not yeah, picking yeah. the soccer games, are we? Oh, is it a Downton yeah. Abbey mix? Maybe. Sure. Maybe. How, about a, how about a fun fact? You okay. want a fun love fact? It, love yes, it, love it. Let's get a fun fact, all right? Hey, boys. Another fun fact for you this week, despite the fact that Rob questioned the accuracy of my penguin facts last week. <laughs> God. Anyway, it is a well-known fact that nearly 100% of all koalas are infected with chlamydia, but koalas in captivity have a strong tendency to reject suitors and engage solely in lesbian sex sessions. Additionally, koala babies eat their mum's poo in a liquefied state also known as PAP, for the microbes the mother carries in their digestive tract. I'm going to throw up. To help uh, with uh, eucalyptus. Koala facts. Yeah. Koalas in the wild typically die of starvation at around six years of age because their teeth wear down and fall out to the point where the koala can no longer eat. That's sad. Speaking of eating, koalas are so intellectually inept that if a bowl of eucalyptus leaves placed in front of them, they will not eat them because they do not recognize the leaves as food once they have been removed from the branch. Their stupidity is attributed to the fact that their brains lack wrinkles, much like Rob. Have a great day. Wow. <laughs> That's our fun fact. I can, you know what? I realize he gained, went into that against me because I questioned his knowledge last week. I condone that entire call.
I got time for two more. Please. Uh, you want a tech call, Oscar? Yes. We have a tech call tech, for tech, you. Tech. Let's uh, let's listen. Yeah, I have a serious question for Pony or Oscar. Some somebody knows something about tech. But anyway, so I hate Windows 10, and I'm in the tech business. And the last issue of Windows I liked was seven. So what the fuck do I do to keep up? <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's a tech question for you guys. Yeah. You, uh, I'm going to let say? Pony do He's a Windows guy. You defer? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Pony. Well, if you like Windows 7, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A lot of profanity, a lot of editing. Yeah, yeah. We apologize we for that. And uh, now the final word. And uh, thank okay. you. By the way, 888-920-6673. Anytime you want to call us. Morning, noon, and night. We like taking calls on the weekend. And uh, give us a call sometime. That's 888-920-MORE, like the Moore Broadcasting Network, mm. or 888-920-6673. The final word on the TMOS Yak Shack. Hey, boys. This is Steve from Sacramento traveling on the beautiful I-5 through Kalinga right now. I just got done listening to the Yak Shack and wanted to speak directly to the other listeners for a second. Um, listen, dum dums. The relationship we have with the show is simple. The boys entertain, <laughs> we listen, and buy things. It's not complicated. You don't call in and talk to them about how to do the show better or where they messed up, messed up or how they can do the picks better. If they want to do the picks or the football uh, deal, you listen. You don't call in and tell them how to do it. What we do is we get on the magic carpet and we go for the ride. If it turns into a dumpster fire, we make s'mores. It's ah. really very simple. <laughs> the boys ask us to buy a fruitcake, we buy a fruitcake. If they come back on and say, hey, we need you to buy another fruitcake, you buy another fruitcake. <laughs> it's not complicated. Let the show be the show. You do your job and listen. That's all I got. Now it's time for me to find a place so I can go big body. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Right. That's, That's a, a great call. last call, isn't it? it? Yeah. That's worth the whole yak check right <laughs> there as far as I'm concerned. Great yaks this week Ooh. at 888 920 Call us anytime, anywhere. We would love to hear from you. We will come back with the final audio vault of the week, and we will get back to Oscar's take next Oscar's week on take. the Mike O'Mara mm. Show. I have it. I wrote it. I lost track of time. I, I don't know what's going I. on. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> Hello, this is internet sensation Toddy Abedje. Do you stare at your computer all day? Well, at least it's better than staring at Santana Moss. Yeah. Face it, you're addicted. So, if you're staring at your computer anyway, you might as well be staring at the Michael Mara Show YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com slash Michael Mara Show and click the bell to subscribe to our page. Now, you can see Mike make fun of Rob's big head or laugh at Oscar while he gets his head shaved. So hit up the TMOS YouTube page and watch all of the episodes that your computer-loving mind desires. Or just throw your computer out the window because if you're not watching us on youtube you're not using your computer for the right things anyway thank you thank you toddy thank you i'm the captain now <laughs> welcome back to the mike o'mara show hey hey you yeah yeah the new fall tv season is here and the verdict is <sighs> unfunny sitcoms stale dramas and reality shows that are a one-way trip to Boredomville. Yeah. You just sit there and spew out your poison at night <laughs> with your typewriter. Uh, that's why you need to shut off the boob tube. Trade your idiot box for your smartphone because smart is always better and there's nothing smarter than the TMOS bonus show. Mm. Right! I was saying someone to that just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unscripted, unrestricted, no holes barred sixth episode of TMOS that you can get every week with just a few simple keystrokes and or mouse clicks. Just click the banner on our website and you get access to all of our bonus content and you'll be helping TMOS. It is and shall always be your passport, passport to the, the passport. Copyright TMOS 2019. Panel fell off. Panel fell off. I'd get into the ass. So please uh, buy the TMOS bonus show. <laughs> Do it. Or sadly, uh, we can no longer be friends. Sad. Sorry. Sad. <laughs> the TMOS bonus show. 
Brought to you by Blackie's House of Beef. Conveniently located at 22nd and M in our nation's capital. Blackie's has been a D.C. destination since 1952. Recently rated a 13 out of 20. Blackie's, where politicians and businessmen rub shoulders nightly. Join us this week as WMAL's Bill Mayhew broadcasts live from Blackie's House of Beef. He's in. Are you doing these from memory? Or do you do these from memory? Do you write them down? Keep them coming. I freaking love <laughs> Is that. it possible really for Bill do. Mayhew to do anything live anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe so. Unless he's a sorcerer. <laughs> All right. Let's open up the audio vault for uh, oh, God. Friday, September 27th, uh, 2019. Rob Spiewak, I apologize. take us home. Take I, us home. Ap- I apologize in advance. I know this has been a rather Rob-centric show, but I don't write history. Yes. 50 years ago this very week, the Beatles released Abbey Road. Now, this is the album in sequence was their second to last album that they released, but it was the final album they recorded. And it was actually a happy time for them because they knew they were going out on top. With the 50th anniversary release of Abbey Road, they released some outtakes that have never been put out before. What happened, though, is the original producer, George Martin, his son, Giles Martin, took the original tracks and remixed them. So you're going to hear a more pronounced uh, focus on the bass and the drums, stuff that was impossible to do. Will you hear those clips of the outtakes uh, on there? Yeah, if you buy one of the more expanded sets. Yeah, they have all the... I'm sorry, how fascinating for, for a guy that, you know, knocks on the Beatles all the time that I'm I'm riveted... It stops you, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not I, a huge I, Beatles I, I, fan. But I'm hey. riveted that, right. that, that that iteration happened and then they found what it was the winner... To yes, get right. on to the album. Mm-hmm. Which is so much of music uh, wow. forever. Where you will sit there and you will change a line, a note, a rhythm. And it it takes it from the being, delivery. And, and I think with music, it's that fickle too. It is. Where, oh, it is. where if you make a wrong turn... The, you know, you don't, you don't, you cannot shortchange wow. the 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 magic that it takes to put these things together. Where the John Q. Public will be out there. So I'm not the Turbo Beatles fan that Rob is, but when he plays that clip, I'm sitting there with my jaw hanging open, going, "Oh, it's not like that." No. Right? So they had to do it a couple of times. That's fascinating. And I, like um, that. I, like I think that a, lot. that a lot of Turbo Beatles fans are excited because. The most behind the scenes stuff that exists of the Beatles working is the movie Let It Be, and they all wanted to kill each other at that mm. point. These behind the scenes tapes, when they come out, we're going to see the Beatles in high spirits because they knew they were going out on top. Everyone right. says and they're that, all still friends. Yeah, uh, everyone yeah. says that this was this was a the last happy time for the band. So hopefully, it's going to be a real positive experience. By the way, I right. watched uh, yesterday uh, the Beatles. Oh, what movie. did you think? I of haven't it? watched it yet. Uh, it it really. It really, it's a good movie. It's a lovely film, right. isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. I wanted to hate it. Weekend. I couldn't. I'll knock it out this weekend, and I Dude. might try Baskets again this week. Please. Do, please do. Please, right. please do. Very good. All very right, good. Uh, Anna Ferris. she's very pretty, uh, yep. popular actress, but she says her parents had a great way to keep her a virgin when she was growing up. My parents were, they're not very religious people, okay. but they were, for whatever reason, they really wanted me to be a virgin. For every brown person can relate in this audience right now. So I had a ton of like dental gear. It started with retainers, then it went to braces and headgear, and it just lasted for years. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm totally convinced that my parents. It was a, it's a brilliant strategy. So dental gear prevented her from being a single mom. Yeah, headgear. the big giant retainer. Sure, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know we salute Florida a lot, but today, Mike, let's turn our eyes to Arkansas, or as some people Arkansas. call it, Arkansas, mm-hmm. where a lady left her child in the cart at Walmart and drove off. Mm. Here's the thing that's amazing about this story. The guy that they interviewed on the news about it that discovered and saved the baby, this guy is ostensibly smarter than the lady that did it because he saved the baby. Right. This is the guy. Kind of went into panic mode, and I was just like, is this really happening? Me and my mom just went normally grocery shopping like we always do and coming out to load the car, and I noticed something was a little off in the distance. I tried chasing her down, but I didn't, I didn't get to her in time. My mom took the baby into the car, put the AC on and everything like that for it, and uh, ended up calling the police. We're not really sure what she was thinking. We're not sure if it was intentional or... Oh what it was. So I would hope that if this happens then anybody would, would do a, the right thing, which is He's definitely a good kid. The yeah. Yeah. Good kid. Yeah, yeah. He's a good kid. Did they find out whether the mother was like abandoning her child or just an airhead? Uh, they 
feel that it has to do with drugs and forgetfulness. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, Too bad. But anyway, away, the kid's okay, though. That's the, that's the yes, happy story yeah. there. All right. That's, that's and uh, let us close with this, Mike. We have aired this before, but for some reason it was trending on YouTube yesterday again. So I bring back a favorite from the past. Let's say you have an orchestra in a church playing a small classical piece and your trombone player sneezes. What do you suppose that would sound like? It I'd might love sound, to hear it again. Might say, this is not, by the way, on the Abbey Road okay. box set. This stands alone. Here is the trombone player sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> one more time, yeah, one in more case time, you please. missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so he sneezed into, into the mouthpiece. Never, piece. never took his mouth off the mouthpiece. What a dedicated tromboner. Yeah, into the mouthpiece. That is your magic audio <laughs> ball. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, boys. A great week of shows. And uh, this weekend, remember, it is our fall fundraiser. Please. And we've made it easier for you to get our fruitcake. So please. Grab one this weekend. Send one to a friend. The holidays uh, will be here before you know it. And Rob puts love into every single fruitcake, and you support TMOS. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Bear telling you to have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Thank God it's Friday! Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Uh, I could pull a better cartoon out of my ear. <laughs> hey, whoa! Wasn't that great, kids? If I thought you were my friend, I just don't think I could bear it. I want you not to go too far. I'm just beginning. <laughs> not funny.